Hey everyone. So I had a couple of questions about how to create plots, uh, plots in Excel or numbers or whatever it is that you can use to make plots look a little bit more uh, polished for the final assignment. And so what I'm going to do is kind of just build from the ground up what I would do if I were in your position. Um, and this is one way that you can get nice-ish looking plots in a relatively quick manner. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of my surveys, right? I had four questions on my surveys and I had two, quest or two conditions in my survey. And question, the first person in my condition is condition, well my conditions say the possible conditions are A and B, right? Um, and so the first person that I'm looking at is in condition A. Question one, they score three. Question two, they score two. Question three, they score four. Question four, they score four. Yeah, and I put that survey to the side. I look at my next survey. Question one: the same. This person is in condition A. Question one: they scored a two. Question two: they scored a two. Question three: they scored a two. Question four: they scored a one. Okay, and I'm going to do this for all of the people in my sample. So, let's say I have five people in condition A, um, and I have some people in condition B. And so what I'm doing, this is a way to record the raw data. Um, sometimes it likes to autocorrect when it's unwarranted. Um, and sometimes I like to put the wrong label when it's unwarranted. So, all right. So now we have some raw data that we can start to work with, right? This is the hardest part in a lot of ways. Um, and I, I don't say that to be flippant. I, I mean that making sure the raw data are recorded correctly is a very, very important thing to worry about, right? So that might mean um, populating your raw da data table, going through again after you've gone and had a dinner break and checking that the raw data, da data are recorded correctly. One advantage of using automation is that, let's say I go through this again and I'm confirming all these numbers and I say, oops, actually the second person in condition B, on question two they didn't respond question four, they respond, or sorry, on question two they didn't respond with a value four, they responded with a value three. It's easy enough correction to make, and what you can do when you have everything automated is that it should automatically correct your charts, and it's just a way to correct that or to check that correction over again on the other side. Um, so these data, uh, I think, are most appropriately represented in a bar plot. Okay. Um, so maybe to make my life easier, I want to make these slightly more meaningful headers. So question one is not just question one. Question one was. Um, uh, number of copies. Right? Question two was uh, hours studied. Question three was maybe confidence about the exam. Exam. Uh, question four might be something like number of snacks. And these aren't going to be realistic data because I, I don't think we would have said yes to anything where you're manipulating the number of coffees that people are drinking. But this condition might be something like the high stress condition. Right, the stress condition. I'm just going to copy those values and save myself a bit of time. Copy paste. Right, uh, stress condition. And this will be the like massage spa day condition. Right. And so my thought is that manipulating stress versus spa will mean that I will see a difference in these scores. This may not be have have been the best design because there's no control condition, but it's not bad for having come up with it in 30 seconds. So I have my two conditions. I have a few response options, right? There's four questions in my survey, and I have the data from the questions. So to visualize this, um, to look at this much raw data and have all the detail um, communicated to the reader is a really challenging problem. I think that maybe the better bet is to take the mean. So what I'm going to do below here is I'm going to re um, calculate the mean. So mean, what was that, the copy? Mean number of copies. Mean study time. Mean confidence. Okay, and mean snacks. There's no such thing as a mean snack, but this means the average snack. All right, so instead of having 10 observations like I do in my raw data, 
because I'm taking the mean, there's only going to be two observations. I'm taking the mean across each condition, right? So all the people in the stress condition will have a mean for each of the questions. All the people in the spa condition will have a mean for each of the condition, uh, each of the questions. So stress, spa. That's all I need for labels. Um, so the mean would be the sum of the scores divided by the number of the scores. So if I'm taking the mean over the condition, I'm only looking at five scores at a time. So I'm adding up three plus two plus three plus five plus two divided by five. Um, what I'm going to do is just automate it because I don't want to have you all sit here and watch me do it by hand. Um, a lot of these spreadsheet softwares have average functions. They are calling this average a little bit sloppily only because they probably haven't taken research methods recently, but this is actually meant to mean the mean. So it's not the, the mode or the median or another measure of central tendency. So I'm taking the average of B2 to B6 because that's where the data lives. So um, column B, row 2, B2, B2, all the way through B6. Okay, that's another way to, oh, I forgot I could do that. So that's going to take the range, right? So it's going to say that the mean for question one for people in condition stress is three. And the reason why I did that in part is because I can just slide that over and it'll auto-populate. Average, uh, oh no. The average of all of you, oh no. Average of all of you, 1.8. Same strategy as before. This is something that I would highly recommend double checking by hand, at least in a couple of cells to make sure that this went right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the row that contains the headers. I'm going to select the column that contains the conditions and all of the data therein. I'm going to hit insert, chart, okay, bam. Without too much work, really, I'm already at the point where I'm looking at a uh, relatively decent bar chart. This is pretty far away from something that it was APA formatted or like that we talked about in lecture. Uh, maybe you covered some of this in tutorial too. So there's a couple of little gotchas uh, I'm going to talk through, but there's going to be a little bit of additional work on your end to make sure that this is all up to APA format standards. Um, so one thing that's probably a glaring issue right now is that there's no titles on this guy. So in my chart wizard, I'm going to hit next. Yep, that's the right series of data. I'm using the first row and the first column as label. That makes sense. Use ranges makes sense. Title. And the title will be mean scores on test scales by condition. You can probably think of a slightly better title by thinking about it a little bit longer than that. A lot longer than that, probably. My x-axis, remember that's the one that goes across here, and that's typically where, we, typically where we put our independent variable, the thing that we manipulated. So the x-axis will be stress or spa. So let's say um, stress environment is a good title for the x-axis. And the y-axis is where our observations live. Our dependent variable will be reflected on the y-axis. And the y-axis will be test item scores. Okay. So we're at the point where we have a graph, it's looking okay. Axes are labeled, critical to label your axes. It has a title that's halfway meaningful. Yours should maybe be all the way meaningful. Um, and so another thing that gets me here is that this is meant to be a bar plot. And it kind of looks like it wants to be a histogram. And I say that because my bars are touching, right? We talked in lecture about spacing our bars out in a bar plot. So in open office, anyways, how I'm going to correct this is let's deselect it for a second. I'm going to right select, right click it. Um, I'm not seeing the option I'm looking for again, so I'm going to double click to get into edit mode. And then after I've double clicked, I'm right clicking again, format data series. And what I'm looking for here is this overlap. So I had to Google this because it wasn't totally clear to me that this is where an option would be to space those bars out. But right now, it has, it, the bars are overlapping by 0%. They overlap by 10%. They're going to, probably exactly like it sounds, overlap by 10%. So what I want is some negative value to space them out. So I'm going to hit that negative 10, hit OK, and we have our spaces and our bars. 
So from there, you can just kind of, um, as if it's any image on any sort of document, just uh, do your Command C or Control C, copy that and paste it into your manuscript. Um, before you do that, I recommend checking over your font and, and ensuring that this is close as you can be to an APA formatted chart. Um, with that, I will sign off, but uh, feel free to ask if you have any questions. And certainly don't be afraid to Google. I've um, been doing this for a few years now and I still Google more than I do innovation. So um, Google can be your friend. And certainly feel free to talk to your TAs about this stuff too. Thanks and I'll talk to you soon.